Hi, you too. Hi, guys. Hi, Epo Lady. Okay, so I'm going to answer your question, and you said, what is spiritual? What is a spiritual father? And I think the best example of a spiritual father is someone like Jesus, the relationship that Jesus had with his disciples and someone like Paul, the relationship that Paul had with the church when he wrote the epistles um, and um, the relationship he had with Timothy. And I also think um, it is someone who has spiritual authority. And let me define spiritual authority because that little phrase means a lot of different things to different people. Spiritual authority is simply um, someone who's filled with the Holy Ghost. Someone who is operating in love, um, someone who is mimicking the characteristics of Jesus, and all of us who have the Holy Spirit has spiritual authority. So before I ventured off into that, <laughs> a spiritual father is someone that you have a relationship with. It's someone that you know intimately, and they know you. Not just someone who's sitting up on the pulpit and you see them every Sunday, and you turn around and say, "Okay, you know that's my spiritual father." No, it is not. If that person doesn't even know your name, your last name, and your mama's name, <laughs> they don't know you intimately. So it is someone that knows you and you know them and you actually have a relationship with them. You can tell them your secrets. You tell them your situation. They give you advice. They they encourage you. They mentor you. They take you under their wing, sort so to speak. So that's what, like, a spiritual father is. So your next question was, how do you choose your spiritual father? Do you choose it or they choose you? According to Scripture, what the Scripture, I'm giving you my, I'm giving you Scripture, not opinion. So according to Scripture and the examples that, are given in scripture um, the father chose the son or whatever <laughs> Jesus chose the disciples and, and um, uh, okay let me say this God chooses and they don't even have to be termed spiritual father but this person that's going to be a, so much of an influence in your life has been chosen by God. Jesus chose the disciples. God chose the church that Paul um, and the other apostles were to be set over. Um, God chose Timothy for Paul, you know, and I think that whatever relationships that you're going to have in your life, even if it's for a season, it's been ordained by God. So this fatherly figure that's going to be in your life, and it's a good thing to have. If you don't have it, don't get all stressed out about it. But there is someone in your life, whether you probably realize it or you don't realize it, there is someone who is a great influence in your spiritual walk, and it can be a woman, it can be a man. You know, it doesn't really matter. But this spiritual father type um, that everybody's going crazy about, <laughs> I don't think... Um, a person can just actually go up to someone and say, okay, you're going to be my spiritual father. I don't really think it works like that because according to scripture, it didn't work like that. And with the spiritual father thing, I also think it's like an unspoken status. The whole world does not have to know and they don't have to tell everybody. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a sincere relationship with godly love and um intent is not something that um, someone has set over for you. You know how when you first go into the church and, and you just get you, get you just got saved and they'll say, okay, I'm going to assign this person to you. It shouldn't be like that. Um, it also shouldn't be something someone should brag about. You know, someone shouldn't go around saying, oh, this is my spiritual father or my mother. Or this is my spiritual son or daughter. It shouldn't be a status with bragging rights because then that's not out of love. It's out of something else. And um, it shouldn't even be like a privileged relationship, you know, where, or like a club where like a few are invited and, and no one else. <laughs> so when it becomes, when it becomes something like that, then it becomes something suspect and it should be checked because then they're off somewhere to another place that they need to be brought back into reality because relationships like that and when the, this whole father thing becomes something of that sort and then you have envy and strife you have competition you have um, 
all of the other evil things that come along with that type of thing. That's why it's very important, especially in the body of Christ, that we don't promote such things because a lot of people are greedy for authority. Everybody wants to be the pastor. Everybody wants to be the elder, the minister, this, the that, because they're being seen. And I seen that a lot when I was growing up in church, and, and it's just so prevalent, and, and, and God is not in that. So with the whole spiritual father thing, I think that relationship shouldn't be forced. It shouldn't be a volunt it shouldn't be volunteered. You know how, you know, during the announcement someone will announce, Okay, we need volunteers for spiritual fathers and mothers or mentors. It shouldn't be anything of that sort. This type of relationship needs to just happen on its own. Relationships like that are ordained by God, it's not forced by anyone or put into action by anyone um, else. If you understand what I'm trying to say, like the pastor is not going to go around and say, okay, you, um, brother so-and-so, is going to be a spiritual father to brother so-and-so. It shouldn't be that way. So the next question is, is your pastor, um, is your pastor, what you say? Oh, is your pastor always your spiritual father? And the answer to that is no. Simply because everybody doesn't have that relationship with their pastor. Some people's relationships with their pastor are just strictly high and by how are you doing, and they're just the pastor. They don't tell them their secrets. They don't tell them their issues. They don't tell them their situations, their problems. They're just the pastor. But I, my pastor was my spiritual father, and it wasn't something that was forced. It just happened, and it was unspoken. It wasn't like, okay, he's my spiritual father. That wasn't even in my mind, but I know he was like a father to me spiritually, and he still is. I even moved from my home church, and I have a new pastor. It's a bigger church. It's about a couple of thousand people. I don't consider that pastor my spiritual father. He is just a pastor, and that is where I go to be spiritually edified. I don't consider him my spiritual father. He's just a pastor, and I respect him as a pastor. Okay, so the last question. You say, if you have one, how did you find them? Okay, so if you have one, how did you find them? Okay, I have one, and again, mine is my pastor, my old pastor. He's retired now, but he was my spiritual father, and he has been ever since I became a babe in Christ when I was 14 years old up until I left the church, that church, when I was 20, 25 or something like that. Yeah, 25, two, three years ago. <laughs> so, um, yes, that's my spiritual father, and the relationship was not chosen. I didn't go around saying, okay, this is going to be my spiritual father. And he didn't say, okay, it's my spiritual daughter. What happened was we just, it just happened. I was always around him constantly. Um, I was used to shut in at church all the time. That used to be my home. I shut in at church so much so that they gave me a key to the church because they know, okay, Sonia's going to be there. And um, that was like my home. I would spend weeks there, um, every weekend there, two weeks out of the month there. I lived there. I participated in everything they had, soup kitchen, I was always at the church, so whatever they were doing, I was doing also, and he just happened to be there, and from that, we would just talk, and a conversation, and um, the relationship just grew, and he he used to shut in also, and he used to spend a night at the church, and we used to talk and pray, and he used to teach me the word, and I confided in him, and he told me a lot of things too, and it was just like a really just like a father and daughter relationship and I love him so much and when he didn't see me at church for one day he would call my house you know Sonia are you okay and you know just checking up on me and he didn't call me often because I was always with him and I used to stay at his daughter's house a lot when I was having trouble well not really having trouble but I had to get out of my house for a couple of weeks so I used to stay at his daughter's house just to get away and um I used to go upstairs and visit him, and we would sit and talk, and what he did was mentor me spiritually, and he, most of it he did with his life. I saw how he responded to situations, people used to do mean things to him, say bad things to him, I saw how he reacted, and everything was according to the word he did, and he, never once have I saw this man come out of character, never once. So that's what I think a spiritual father is, and that's why he has been a spiritual father to me. And it's, it was never said. It was something that was just so. So um, I hope that answers your questions. I hope this helps. Excuse my bustedness, but you see my, my dark rings around my eyes? Guys? This is what I can steal. <laughs> when I have more makeup, this is what I can steal. My little bumps here, I just broke out because of the monthly thing. But anyway. 
see, I'm off track. That's why I had to write the questions down. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope this helps. If anyone has any response or uh, wants to add something, go ahead. Um, please don't start bashing and doing all that stuff. That's not necessary. If we're Christians, we shouldn't do that to each other.